The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Hey, Kara Ustros here with realagriculture.com. We are here with a brand new wheat school, and with everything going on in the world right now, we are practicing some safe social distancing and using technology to ensure you are still getting all the information you need. So today I have here with me Jeremy Boychin, who is the Agronomy Research Extension Specialist with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commissions. How's it going today? Just peachy. I'm here in isolation, I think day 10. Uh, So trying to keep sane. Yep, that's fair enough. So today we are here to talk about the importance of understanding thousand kernel weight in your wheat crops and how that will affect moving into the 2020 season. Can you highlight why this is an essential? Yeah, I, I'd imagine there's uh, there's some people out there thinking, oh my goodness, I've, I've heard about thousand kernel weight a million times. Um, but the, the fact is, and I'm still having conversations about it, and I'm, I'm still um, chatting with producers as to why it's important to understand some of these things. Because um, if you're not utilizing thousand kernel weight to determine how much seed you're putting in the ground, either you're missing opportunity um, to to take better agronomic advantage of that seed and, and of your inputs, um, or you're putting too much seed in the ground uh, and you're not making good use of the land uh, and the seeding that you are doing. So um, I wanted to kind of talk about some of um, the implications of not using thousand kernel weight uh, and how that may affect um, your crop stand and, and future agronomics. So before we dive into that, I know it's pretty basic. It is a matter of actually counting your kernels, but can you, I guess, talk a bit about how you do it so what you want to do if you want to get your thousand kernel weight is there's two options first you can set it into a seed lab Um, they're going to give you uh, an exact thousand kernel weight um, and you're going to be able to take that along with your vigor and your germination and utilize that but if you want to do it on farm um, what you can do is count 10 um, or 50 kernels uh, and get the weight of that and then multiply it up to a thousand and that will get you the amount of uh, the weight of those thousand kernels so I guess now moving forward, why is this important? Why, why do producers need to actually make this uh, a priority? Yeah, so I mean, especially with some of the concerns we've seen coming out of past years of variable harvests, and that's leading to um, variable seed quality. Uh, but not only that, but, but um, seed size as well. Um, so um, when I hear the comment of, you know, I'm, I just kind of run at, at two bushels or two and a half bushels and it's in around the same range, when you go year to year and also when you switch varieties, um, that thousand kernel weight can change. So I actually have, uh, because I came prepared, um, four different seed lots here. So I have CDC Go, uh, I have Harvest, I have Andrew, and I have Foremost. Um, And they all have generally around the same germination. They range from 96 to 99% germination. Um, But where there is biggest range is their actual thousand kernel weight. Um, And foremost actually has the biggest seeds of this lot. So it's 48, around 48 grams per thousand kernel weight. Where if you go to Andrew, it's around that 38 grams per thousand kernel weight. So then if you start having that discussion of, okay, I'm going to put this in the ground at two or two and a half bushels per acre, um, you're talking about a big difference in the amount of actual seed that's going in the ground because there's more seed in uh, a thousand grams of Andrew than there will be in foremost. And when you're aiming for specific um, plant stand per foot or per square meter, um, if you're not being specific with the amount of seed that's going in the ground, um, you're likely going to miss that desired target. Um, So the perfect example here of Andrew and Foremost, um, if you're aiming for, based on the numbers that I've given, uh, a 35 plants per square foot, um, you'd be going with 184 pounds of the Foremost and 145 pounds of the Andrew. So when you do that and extrapolate that over a few thousand acres, the bushel difference there can be quite enormous. So in the longer term heading into the season, or I guess later on in the season, if you have the wrong seeding rate, what sort of implications could that have agronomically? 
Well, uh, first off, if you're if you're going in and you're seeding uh, based on bushel and not by thousand kernel weight, you obviously have the risk of seeding too high or seeding too low. If you're seeding too high, um, you're going to have increased um, amount of seeds that don't actually germinate. There's going to be a lot of intra seed competition in that row. Um, so. Uh, and you may not see an advantage of that when it comes to yield and quality. You may just be putting extra seed in the ground at extra cost and not getting the benefit of that. And then the co- the converse of that is if you are going at a lower seeding rate um, because of, of having um, not using the thousand kernel weight, what potentially can end up happening is having too low of a plant stand. Um, you're going to increase the amount of tillers. Uh, you're going to increase the time of maturity of that crop. So flowering is going to be longer because you have more tillers. Um, you may have uh, increased weed challenges because there's it takes longer for that crop to fill in because there's less plants. Um, you may not be utilizing the nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium that you've been putting down with that crop as much as you can be. So you just become inefficient with the land that you're seeding it on. Um, and then, yes, as you head into later in the season, your increased disease risk, um, especially when it comes to fusarium and we've seen fusarium numbers going up uh, from this past year uh, and then maturity maturity is going to range a, a little or t- take a little bit longer to mature because if you're waiting for those late tillers um, so it, it can impact you all the way down and all the way through the cropping season okay anything else you'd like to add uh, just get your seed tested make sure you know what you're putting in the ground and, and grow a good wheat crop okay awesome thank you very much jeremy thanks